Today, let's talk about how I measure the temperatures of my ubiquity devices by myself. So this is my rack and the top part is for my uh, switches. So now let's zoom in. For every switch, if you check the uh, manufacturer's user's menu, you can get the operating temperature. I believe most people's home uh, meet that uh, condition, but it doesn't mean your temperature will behave the same because in my past experience, for example, just five Celsius, uh, sorry, five Fahrenheit degree difference in my room temperature will have huge impact on the temperature of my switches sometimes it's even more or less 15 fahrenheit de uh, degree difference just because of five degrees difference in room temperature right so that's the first uh, important factor is your room temperature the second thing is the load to your devices so for example today just because i'm uh, taking the video i already shut down the servers so that uh, just to reduce the noise but because of that uh, the, the the load for some of my switches will be less than normal okay let's zoom in more So even for the same switch, the different part has totally different temperature. For example, for this uh, eight part aggregation, the, if you plug in the, for example, uh, if you plug in the deck table, the copper cable, the temperature is, the, uh, is not very hot, but for if you plug in fiber or sometimes RJ45, it's much higher. And for example, this part, the touch screen part, or here, the button part, it, the temperature is the lowest. And in the back, uh, the part close to the PSU, normally it's very hot, right? And uh, in my previous video, I show you how you, how to measure uh, how to get the temperature by using SSH as an MP or by downloading device information, right? But unfortunately, for some non-pro versions, it simply doesn't have the sensors or it doesn't even support the command line command line tool to get temperature. For example, this aggregation. For example, this non-pro version switch. For example, this cloud key. So they, you have no way to get the building temperature uh, sensor uh, reading. Sometimes it doesn't have uh, any sensor. So how do you uh, know the temperature? Of course, you have to measure it by yourself, right? So today, I'm going to use this tool, it's Milwaukee. Uh, thermal gun and I'm going to measure different part of the my devices and then in the end I will show you what I get but now just as a, a demo how I uh, measure it right for example if I want to measure this part is the copper cable which plug in to the SFP plus part right so I just point the laser to the metal part of the plug and then this is the reading and if i want to measure for example this part the top i will point to it and here is the reading if i want to measure the lcd point it here is the reading. As you can see, the temperature is totally different. Okay, 
I will uh, do my memory and then later I will show you what I get. Now I have the results back. So let's take a look. Let me show the full screen. Okay. So first let's talk about the two uh, 24 ports switches. Uh, the first one is the Pro version. The second one is just simple Gen 2, no Pro version. Neither of them is PoE. Okay, so I highlighted the highest temperature uh, in red color. Uh, just keep in mind all of them are in Fahrenheit. Okay, so first the Pro version. As expected, the the SFP part and the RJ45 parts, they are pretty hot. But surprisingly, the top, top of the chassis is even uh, hotter than the part. And uh, this switch doesn't have fans, even though it's much powerful than the non-pro version. I believe that's why the temperature of the pro version is much much higher than the non-pro version. And if you take a look at the non-pro version, nothing special. Uh, if you use your hand to touch the two switches, you can feel the differences. It's, they're very apparent differences. Sometimes you even don't want to uh, put your hand on this pro version one second longer okay now let's move on to the two poe uh, switches they are not rack mount version and the first one is the big brother it's uh, eight poe parts the second one is just uh, four of the eight parts they are poe and I, in my opinion, the first one, the, 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 the 150 watt one, has much higher temperature during uh, when it runs. But on the internet, some people say this one is cooler. I don't know why. As you can see, the PoE RJ45 is super hot and much hotter than this. 60 watt version okay uh, by the way both of them they don't have uh, fans and only the first one has uh, built-in temperature sensor okay and now let's talk about this uh, small white uh, flex mini switch this one is very cheap and it even doesn't have a uh, support SSH and it doesn't have any built-in uh, temperature sensor and I'm surprised that the, 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 the body, the chassis has such high temperature because if you just touch it you don't feel it. I believe that's because the, the body is plastic if it's metal, uh, you can feel it, but because it's plastic, that's why I don't, uh, I haven't heard anyone uh, complain about the temperature, but it's surprisingly high. Okay, now let's move on to these two USW aggregation. One is non-pro version, only has eight part, and then the other one is the pro version, it has 28. SFP plus which are 10 gigabits and 8 SFP 28 which are uh, yes uh, SFP 28 right and here for these two switches I used three different ways to uh, three different cables uh, I use uh, RJ45 I use the direct uh, copper connection and I also use fiber cable so for the three different uh, ways to connect 
you will have different temperatures. Normally the RJ45 is much higher. And this one, the Pro version, is the only switch uh, which has fans uh, in my home lab. And as you can see, the, the fans really help a lot. None of the temperature exceeded 100 Fahrenheit. Okay, so now let's move on to the last one. This one is the most disappointing because it consistently run super hot. It's the, this one is the champion of today's testing. And it only has one terabyte built-in hard drive, but I don't use it uh, as a unified protect device and I don't have any cameras connected but it still runs super hot and I don't want to touch it using my hand because as you can see they are far above 100 Fahrenheit okay so this is just a simple non-scientific testing and the reason I want to show all these details to you guys is just to uh, show you a way to somehow know the temperature even though we all know my way is not very uh, accurate and it's, the reading is not precise for sure but at least uh, it's better than just using your hand to touch your devices to feel them and in many cases your device simply doesn't support better way to read temperature and this is your uh, DIY way okay thanks for watching